Hello YouTube, this is DVD Review Studios here, and today I shall be doing a review on the complete series of Gravity Falls on DVD. This is a collector's edition box set released by the good folks over at Shout Factory. And I highlight that specifically since this box set is not only incredible in terms of its content and overall quality for the release, but also the fact that if it was solely up to Disney, I really do doubt that this box set would even exist. It looked incredibly unlikely for the remainder of the show to be released onto DVD following a couple of volumes of the earlier season, releasing with just a few episodes here and there, but for a complete series release, it was looking all the more unlikely until 2018 when this box set was finally announced, and you can grab this on both DVD and Blu-ray if you were wondering. And so for the DVD edition, this is a 7-disc box set, and it contains 3 DVD cases with seasons 1 and 2 included, which have 20 episodes each, and then a special features disc, and then the beauty of the 3 DVD cases included is that it replicates the 3 journals from the series, which is absolutely fantastic, and already goes to show the amount of detail and effort put into this release, ideally for longtime fans of the show, that would obviously love to have this in their physical media collection for many years to come. Before we go into detail of the episodes included, we shall look at the overall exterior box set. So here's the front cover design, which is absolutely fantastic. I love the glossy finish to the outer box set, and the graphics are fantastic as well. With the main characters pictured, we have Dipper and Mabel Pines, the twins who discover the supernatural weirdness to the town of Gravity Falls, which is the main hook for the show's story. And the remaining characters, we have their Great Uncle Stan, or Gronkle Stan, Seuss, who is a great character, and Wendy, who was one of my favourite characters throughout the series there as well. There's the side, Gravity Falls Complete Series Collector's Edition with the Mystery Shack prominently pictured. And here is the back cover for the DVD set, which if you wish to pause and read over the summary for the show, you are welcome to do so. And in terms of special features that are included, we have commentary on all 40 episodes. Uh, we have a couple of short features, we have One Crazy Summer, a look back at Gravity Falls with the cast and crew involved with the series. The Hirsch Twins, which is basically the creator of the show, Alex Hirsch, reminiscing on the time that he spent over many summers with his twin sister Ariel, uh, which seemed to inspire a lot of the series in terms of its context and comedy structure. Uh, Between the Pines behind the scenes special, which is a little bit spoilery, um, deleted scenes as always, shorts, promos, etc, and more question mark, which we will get to in a moment's time. And here are the individual DVD cases once again, as we showed off before, replicating the style of the journals. And so we have seasons 1 and 2 contained on the first two, and the bonus features on the third, which we will get to momentarily. And in terms of the series itself, two seasons, 40 episodes, only two seasons. It's surprising, the show in itself was incredibly popular, it wasn't cancelled surprisingly. It's a show that did actually come to a natural conclusion in such a short amount of time, without dragging on or being lengthened unnecessarily beyond the story that creator Alex Hirsch wanted to tell. And I do admire that, since there was certainly a potential within this series to carry on more and more and more in terms of content and in terms of characters, since the animation quality was superb, the writing was absolutely fantastic, the comedy elements are phenomenal, and even for the show itself, it won many, many awards. It seemed crazy to just end it, but obviously it ended for a reason, and that's because it told the story it wanted to achieve. And like I said, I do find that to be fantastic in terms of not lengthening it unnecessarily, and it's definitely admirable for that particular reason. And so in terms of the seasons, we'll go through these one by one. I'm not going to go through all the episodes individually in complete thorough detail, just because with Gravity Falls there is a lot to cover. Um, so for both of these DVD sets, for season one and season two, they are both three discs each. So there we have the designs for the discs on season one with Mabel and Dipper there, disc two with Grunkle Stan, and disc three with Lil Gideon, a character that I did honestly despise at first, but I feel had an okay redemption arc, and we'll touch on that throughout the video too. And another thing that I really do appreciate with these DVDs is the amount of detail in terms of artwork and content, but also an episode guide. You cannot go wrong with an episode guide, of which let us go through these episodes and detail my thoughts on them.
Beginning with disc one, first up we have Taurus Trapped, which is an okay introductory episode. It definitely does have its strength in really establishing the main characters, where Dipper and Mabel Pines are sent to live with their great uncle Stan, or Gronkle Stan, and the opening narration where Dipper states how they're basically going to be staying with Grunkle Stan over the course of the summer in the forest town of Gravity Falls, Oregon. It's a great setup and very quickly establishes the setting and obviously the characters we're going to get to know over the course of the series. And the establishment of the characters is fantastic. We have Dipper, who is basically a mod kind of conspiracy theorist, which I think is quite amusing. Mabel is a very cartoonishly positive character, and very creative as well, who is voiced phenomenally by the very talented Kristen Schaal, who people will likely know for Louise in Bob's Burgers, and also her character in the Toy Story movies. And we also have Grunkle Stan, who is personally my favourite character, and definitely the most likeable and most interesting character with a lot of mystery surrounding him, but after all, he does own the Mystery Shack, and that's basically his gimmick as a con artist, which I think is quite hilarious for establishing him straight out as that kind of character. I thought that was very unexpected. And for the main plot, I feel it's a little bit weak in some areas, but the main draw is journal number three being discovered in the forest by Dipper, and the journal opens up many interesting possibilities for where the series is going to go in terms of its overall direction, with the journal basically stating some of the bizarre, paranormal, and supernatural aspects of the town of Gravity Falls, and that comes into play where Mabel has a summer boyfriend that is suspected to be a zombie, but instead is just a bunch of gnomes stacked up on top of each other, which is a very strange kind of direction for this first episode to go into anyway. But that kind of coaxes us into this supernatural order of things within Gravity Falls and over the course of the remainder of the series. It only gets weirder from there, so let us continue with the next episode which is the Legend of the Gobble Wonka, which I thought was genuinely one of the funnier episodes of the first season and was one of the episodes that really drew me into the show, where Dipper is trying to prove the existence of this Gobble Wonka creature, which is basically an aquatic myth monster. And this brings us to the character of Old Man McGucket, who is absolutely hilarious. He's definitely one of my favourite characters from the entire show. And over the course of the show, he definitely does have a lot more involvement with the main plot. But sticking with this episode in particular, you do kind of feel sorry for him. He's very much an attention-seeking style character, but sticking with the focus on this episode with Dipper, he is the primary focus trying to achieve a photo of this mythical creature, and the visual gag of him having so many cameras on hand was one of the most memorable jokes from going into this series, which definitely was one of the funnier moments throughout the first season as a whole. And speaking of which, the next episode, Headhunters, was another great one that again really sold the theme of the show to me, where a room literally full of weird sort of wax statues is discovered within the mystery shack. And there's one of Grunkle Stan which actually gets decapitated. And so the remainder of the episode is a whodunit kind of murder mystery story, only with anthropomorphic wax statues that actually come to life, which was very strange. Next up is The Hand That Rocks the Mabel, which is a great episode specifically for Mabel trying to get out of a relationship with a very unlikable character found in Lil Gideon, who is basically a TV show kind of freak show attraction to a degree, his gimmick being that he is a psychic. And like with most things in that realm, he is obviously a fraud. And he basically tries to cheat Grunkle Stan out of ownership of the Mystery Shack, which was the beginning of their sort of cat mouse style relationship over the course of the series. And the big reveal from this episode was that Gideon actually owns journal number two, swearing revenge on Dipper for breaking up Mabel and him. So that was very unique in terms of setting up another plot point. And then the last couple of episodes on disc one are kind of similar in their themes. We have the inconveniencing, which has a big focus on Dipper trying to basically find what it takes to be a man, which has another funny side plot to it where he actually has a crush on the character of Wendy. 
And so he tries to basically act tough and act like a, a big man, sort of getting in touch with his adolescent kind of stage in life. And I found that to be all the more funnier in Dipper versus Manliness, where he actually goes out into the forest to try and learn what it takes to be a man and comes across a whole bunch of minotaurs, more mythical characters, who actually try to teach him the ways of becoming a man. And the episode overall has some really hilarious dialogue moments, especially from Grunkle Stan in particular. For disc two, first up is Double Dipper, which is easily my top five favorite episodes of the series, where Grunkle Stan is hosting a party at the Mystery Shack in order to manipulate some business, and asks Dipper to photocopy some flyers, only for the photocopier to actually copy human beings, and so Dipper uses these clones made out of paper to stage a bizarre romance plan to try and get close with Wendy, which was honestly some of the funniest dialogue exchanges between basically himself multiple times, which I absolutely loved. Next up is Irrational Treasure, which is basically Mabel trying to uncover a cover-up plot about the town founder being a hoax uncovering that the real town founder was a very silly eccentric man claiming to be the eighth and a half president of the United States called Quentin Tremblay, a very memorable character at that. Next up is The Time Traveler's Pig, which is another favourite episode of mine, a great complex story, where we have a carnival in Gravity Falls where the twins come across a time traveller character, Blendin Blandin, voiced very recognisably by good old Justin Roiland. And this episode is great where Dipper actually steals Blendin's time machine, or time tape measure it basically is. And so he's trying to fix a mistake that he keeps making where he's trying to win a carnival game for Wendy and accidentally hits her in the eye. And while this is going on, Mabel is trying to win a pet pig. Only Dipper doesn't realize, but every time he repeats time, trying again and again to not make the same mistake, eventually when he does succeed in not making the mistake, Mabel loses the pet pig Waddles, which was a very upsetting sequence to watch and was actually one of the first sort of divides between the siblings where they actually didn't get along, surprisingly. Next up is Fight Fighters, another amusing episode involving Dipper and Wendy, where Wendy's boyfriend Robbie is actually jealous of Dipper, surprisingly, and challenges him to a fight. And Dipper, very nervous about this, tries to learn how to fight from his favourite arcade game, Fight Fighters, and discovers a cheat code where he can actually unleash the ultimate power, only to literally unleash the video game character into the real world and then learn how to fight from that character, which I thought was very creative in terms of the overall episode story trajectory. Little Dipper is a fairly self-explanatory episode where Dipper is actually self-conscious of his height, since Mabel is actually slightly taller than him, and so they end up finding height-altering crystals where things go awfully wrong, where Lil Gideon is reintroduced, attempting to exact revenge and takes advantage of the shrink ray that they build. Continuing disc two, we have Summerween, which was actually a fairly creative episode, trying to do a Halloween-themed episode within the constraints of a summer-themed show. And the episode was fairly basic, sort of trying to appease a Halloween monster by trick-or-treating and collecting enough candy so as to not be eaten. And then Boss Mabel was fairly self-explanatory as well, with a role reversal, where Mabel questions Grunkle Stan's management skills of the Mystery Shack, and challenges his style, basically stating whoever can make the most money using their style can have full management of the Mystery Shack for the remainder of the summer. Here's the artwork that was hidden behind Disc Free. And of course, speaking of which, first up is Bottomless Pit, which was a bit of a filler episode. It pretty much speaks for itself, the characters end up falling down a bottomless pit and for the duration of the episode are still falling. And so to explore the characters and give a little bit more detail to the characters we have come to know over the past few episodes, they tell stories to one another just to more or less pass the time. Next up is The Deep End, which was one of my least favourite episodes of the entire show, to be honest where Mabel befriends and seeks to help rescue a trapped merman who is confined to the deep end of the community pool where all the characters go due to how hot it's become over the summer. And on a side story, which was the only really humorous part of this episode, Dipper once again tries to get close with Wendy and applies to be the assistant lifeguard at the pool, which introduces us to the really freaky character of Mr. Paulcheck, that is one scary guy who is constantly surveying Dipper to ensure he is actually playing by the pool's safety rules. 
Next up is Carpet Diem, which is a very strange episode provoking some sibling rivalry, which seems to be very uncharacteristic of the twins as we've seen them from the majority of this series, at least so far at this point, where they fight over a hidden room which is discovered in the Mystery Shack to claim its ownership, and end up body swapping through the room's sort of magic carpet, which is very bizarre. Next up we have another episode I'm not really a big fan of, and that is Boys Crazy, where it's revealed a popular boy band that Mabel and her friends are obsessed with are actually a group of imprisoned clones forced to perform, and so Mabel and her friends attempt to set them free to then wonder what to do with them next as they begin to just continue obsessing over these characters, an episode that I do tend to skip over, in all honesty. Next up is The Land Before Swine, a really great pun, where the Pines family attempt to save their pet pig, Waddles, who is actually taken by a Pteranodon, uncovering a preserved time capsule of prehistoric history beneath the town of Gravity Falls. And the last two episodes are pretty much interconnected. We have Dreamscaperers and Gideon Risers, where the first of which has Lil Gideon once again trying to trick Grunkle Stan, into handing over the Mystery Shack, and he actually summons a demon, Bill Cipher, the show's main villain, in order to break into Stan's mind and find the access code for the Mystery Shack safe in order to steal the deed of ownership for the Mystery Shack, which is a really funny juxtaposition doing something so chaotic for something as simple as a password for a safe. Yeah, kind of doesn't match up in that regard, but to my surprise, Gideon actually succeeds, showing Bill to be a force to be reckoned with, as well as that character being incredibly insane and the animation used surrounding him absolutely hilarious in terms of the easter eggs and foreshadowing for the later stages of the show, but also the weird stuff that's done such as stealing a deer's teeth, that was definitely one that really cracked me up the first time I saw it. And so now with Gideon's success, we now have a very emotional but very rewarding season finale to the first season, where Gideon manages to capture the attention of the entire town now that he owns the Mystery Shack and having now kicked Stan and the twins out of living in the Mystery Shack, who are forced to move in with Seuss's family, which was absolutely hilarious in terms of comedy, but in terms of where the episode really does get to be quite evocative, we have Stan with a heavy heart realising that he can no longer actually look after the twins, and his realisation of this was a moment of defeat, which was very unlike Grunkle Stan, and just shows how much character progression we have seen with his character, especially with the big reveals in this episode. But once it's revealed that Stan is planning to send the twins back home early to live with their parents again, the twins end up going out to fight back against Gideon, who has built a giant mechanical version of himself, in a really strange turn of events which leads to one hell of a fight scene, which was really well animated. And then the big reveal at the very end, the big cliffhanger finale, which was unbelievable, Stan knows a lot more than he is letting on, as he picks up all three journals revealing a secret basement beneath the Mystery Shack, and that sets up the events of Season 2. Here we go. And so, leaving off of Season 1 with such a heavy cliffhanger finale, we have the second season of Gravity Falls, which has a much darker tone to it as a whole, and some of the episodes feel a little bit more experimental, which is interesting, and in terms of the genres that they cover, there's quite literally a lot of darker, more adult themes included, um, particularly with the first couple of episodes and the exploration into Stan Pines' past. And so with Season 2, let us look at the DVD discs. So it's another three disc set with Wendy on disc 1, Seuss on disc 2, and Bill Cipher on disc 3. And so beginning with disc 1, we have Scary Oak, which is, again, much darker in tone. And in this instance, we have Stan continuing his portal experiments, attracting the attention of the government, where Dipper then tries to prove that the journals hold the truth to the bizarre nature of Gravity Falls, only to try to prove this to the government agents and accidentally raise the dead. And so we literally have a zombie-themed episode, which is pretty brutal in some instances, and I very much enjoyed this opening to the second season. Into the Bunker is another favourite episode of mine, especially for the Dipper and Wendy moments throughout the episode, 
where the characters uncover a bunker hidden beneath the forest and try to discover the author of the journals, only to come across instead a shapeshifter pretending to be the author. Uh, the next episode, The Golf War, is kind of forgettable but still amusing for what it represents with a mini golf tournament going way out of control and more inanimate objects coming to life in the form this time of golf balls. Next up is Sock Opera featuring the return of Bill Cipher, where Mabel puts on a puppet show at the local theatre and meanwhile Dipper is trying to hack the laptop that he found in the Bunker episode, and out of desperation, since he can't crack the password, he makes a deal with Bill, the password in exchange for one of Mabel's puppets. Or so he thinks when Bill is actually referring to Dipper's body as a vessel to possess. And so he possesses Dipper, resulting in Dipper becoming a ghost. And the remainder of the episode is Bill in control of Dipper, which was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Is hilarious. Seuss and the Real Girl is another really strange episode where Seuss is trying to learn how to talk to girls and ends up in a relationship with a computer game which was unexpected even for his character. Little Gift Shop of Horrors is another Halloween themed episode only this time it's more or less a filler kind of episode where we have three short stories exploring creative freedom within the world of Gravity Falls, and my favourite was Waddles actually becoming intelligent and starts inventing and learns how to speak, which was, again, another unexpected moment from this series. And last up on the first disc is Society of the Blind Eye, which reveals quite a large portion of McGucket's tragic backstory, where he is the founder of the Society of the Blind Eye, who are hell-bent on erasing the minds of those who have experienced something weird as such in Gravity Falls. And Mabel is wanting to try and forget her boyfriend experiences, which leads the group, including McGucket, to discovering these old memories that McGucket had actually stored and erased. And it was quite tragic to see him watching himself on the screen just slowly deteriorate over time. Moving on to disc two, we have Blendin's Game, featuring the return of the character of Blendin Blandin. And even though this episode was very good for the time travel aspect of things and the sci-fi stuff, I really enjoyed this for its primary focus on the character of Seuss, since it's uncovered that Seuss, as a child, experienced quite an awful birthday, which has basically tarnished birthdays going forward for him. And so Mabel and Dipper try to basically throw him a surprise birthday party and make him feel better about himself, uncovering a tragic backstory involving Seuss's father walking out on him when he was a child. And the way they actually try to repair this by literally going back in time, the writing of this episode for only 20 minutes was absolutely phenomenal and very enjoyable. The Love God is a very strange filler episode about forced relationships and matchmaking. And the Love God character was absolutely hilarious. It kind of reminded me of Preston Lacey from Jackass. Continuing disc two, next up is Northwest Mansion Mystery, which is another darker-themed episode. In this one, Dipper is oddly paired up with the rich kid character, Pacifica, as they team up together to fight a ghost lumberjack who is part of a curse put on Pacifica's family. The next couple of episodes are some of the biggest in terms of the overall plot reveal and payoff for some of the cliffhangers that have been set up. And that begins in the episode Not What He Seems, relating primarily to Grunkle Stan's character, and coming off of the finale of season 1 and the opening episode to season 2, he is still continuing the experiments in the basement of the Mystery Shack with the portal, and this attracts the attention of the government once again where he powers on the portal, and he is actually taken into custody by the government agents. And while this is happening, both Dipper and Mabel are slowly trying to figure out what Grunkle Stan has been up to. And they actually feel betrayed looking into his past and finding various shady bits of information about Grunkle Stan that don't quite add up. And seeing some CCTV footage of him acting in illegal exports was the icing on the cake where they do genuinely feel betrayed and don't quite understand what Grunkle Stan has been doing. And as the audience, we feel the exact same way. 
And so when Grunkle Stan does escape custody and Dipper and Mabel are about to shut down the portal, the dialogue exchange where the children feel so betrayed, Seuss is trying to save the children, and Stan is trying to keep the experiment on while everyone is basically trying to shut it off and shut him down. It's overall one of the most evocative sequences where the big reveal is the identity of the author of the journals, Grunkle Stan's brother, who is voiced incredibly by J.K. Simmons, and that is Grunkle Ford, or Great Uncle Ford. And from such an incredible plot twist, we have A Tale of Two Stans, which is basically the full exposition needed for Stanley and Stanford, looking into their childhood through various flashbacks and how their separation happened, with Ford now building the portal, and this fills in the remainder of Old Man McGucket's backstory as well. And then we also have Stan's backstory, trying to survive in the real world, and then the characters are brought back together, only to basically be ripped apart once again, when, during a fight, Stan loses his brother, and he doesn't quite understand what has happened or how to switch the portal back on to get his brother back. And out of instinct, he basically takes over. He takes over the Mystery Shack as a tourist attraction to make money, and tries from the looks of things every night to attempt to switch back on the portal and bring back his brother. And this episode was incredibly well written to explore some of the hints given to us in some of the earlier episodes. And the end credit sequence was some great comic relief after all the drama side of things as well. With Seuss trying to explain to Wendy at 3 in the morning what has actually happened during the events of this episode. The next few episodes begin the slow build-up towards the grand finale of the entire series, beginning with Dungeons, Dungeons, and More Dungeons, which was a very funny character-building episode, mainly for Dipper and Grunkle Ford, as together they end up getting far too involved with a very obsessive variation of the Dungeons & Dragons game which is brought into real life. And the next episode was also very good, The Stanturian Candidate, where Stan actually starts a campaign for Mayorship of Gravity Falls, and in short, he's awful at it. And so Dipper and Mabel step in and basically control what he's saying through a mind-controlling tie in order to help him secure votes for Mayorship of the Town. For disc 3 we have The Last Mabel Corn, which was definitely one of my favourite episodes and had some great standout moments for Mabel in particular. The opening to the episode has some phenomenal hints in the form of a dream sequence, where Ford and Bill are seen to be responsible for the end of the world as they know it. And this episode has some phenomenal moments with Mabel and her friends trying to steal unicorn hair, which can be used to basically protect the mystery shack from Bill and his weirdness. And this episode had one hell of a message, and that is that unicorns are just dicks. And the way they manipulate Mabel throughout this episode was honestly one of the funniest dialogue exchanges throughout. And Mabel raging at one of the unicorns at the end was definitely justified in my opinion. Roadside Attraction is another fillerish style episode, which I thought was okay. It had a great focus on Grunkle's Dam, where he basically plans to prank and sabotage other tourist attractions. Next up is Dipper and Mabel vs. The Future, which is quite the existential episode, and overall quite depressing in some instances as well. With this speculating on Dipper and Mabel's future, Mabel is planning their shared upcoming 13th birthday, and meanwhile, Dipper is more excited about the opportunity to become Grunkle Ford's apprentice within the realm of the supernatural. And when Mabel overhears this idea during an adventure Ford and Dipper share exploring a crashed UFO beneath the surface of the town, with this, Mabel and Dipper have one hell of an argument which is really out of character for both of them. And with this, Mabel runs away and is actually tricked by Blendin' Blandin of all characters possessed by Bill, where she accidentally unleashes the end of the world. And this leads us into the three-part finale, Weird Mageddon, where Bill Cipher has now been unleashed upon the town of Gravity Falls in a physical form. And there are loads of great references from over the course of the series in this episode, where Bill now unleashes his weirdness across the town and actually kidnaps Mabel as well. 
which leads us into part two, Escape from Reality, where the characters rescue Mabel from a falsified reality constructed by Bill. Oh, this isn't real! And that takes us to part three, which is an extended episode, double the length of the usual 20 minutes, and that is Take Back the Falls which was a great episode showing all the main characters, including Gideon as well, surprisingly giving him a little bit of a redemption arc, all pulling together to inevitably defeat Bill, but with a sacrifice. And this sacrifice could have been stuck too, to really give it a very hard-hitting emotional ending, but it was quickly reversed, which I can understand why. And for the emotional ending in itself, it was overall a brilliant finale, very well written, and the performances utilising the world building from the 30 plus episodes previous. It was a very satisfying conclusion, and for a series as a whole for only 40 episodes, it has a very emotional tale attached to it, and I would definitely recommend this show for pretty much all ages. It's a very complex, but very well-written and comedic series that I think is definitely universally going to be enjoyed all around. And here is journal number three, which includes the bonus features for this DVD set. And so there's the disc with the Bill Cipher inscription included on there, and then as always, some artwork pictured there behind. And my favourite inclusion with this DVD set, which Shout Factory certainly didn't have to do, but I really do appreciate this, and that is the letter from the very end of Gravity Falls that Dipper receives. And this is the full detailed letter with all these signatures from the very end of Season 2 stating... See you next summer, and everyone has signed it on there. There's also an ad included for the Gravity Falls Lost Legends graphic novel, which is something that's definitely worth looking into. I ended up watching a YouTube audio comic video of these stories, and they were overall very enjoyable. And then for the bonus features, we've gone through the majority of these, but for ones that stand out to me personally, uh, the deleted scenes were very good. I like seeing segments that could have made it into the series, but didn't for varying reasons. And particularly, I really enjoyed the stuff from Alex Hirsch especially, uh, since he had some great explanations behind some of the inclusions within the show. And one of the last minute inclusions was the end credit sequence on the finale episode of the Bill Cipher statue, which is something that he actually hid in real life and is something that is actually out there, so kind of sort of starting a real-life scavenger hunt from outside the series, which is very unique to say the least. And so that's going to do it for my complete series review on Gravity Falls. I hope you enjoyed. This show is overall absolutely phenomenal. If you haven't checked it out, I would highly recommend it. It's clearly made quite the name for itself, with many other cartoons such as Rick and Morty and Amphibia referencing this show, and I absolutely adore the characters included within this series, and I do hope to some degree we do see them again in the near future. Uh, so that's going to do it for my review. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like down below. Let me know in the comments what are your thoughts on Gravity Falls as a series. And for more videos, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, DVD Review Studios. Are you threatening me?